Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jenna and I work in housing here at the University of Pittsburgh. I don't have my fancy background this evening um, that says Pitt Housing, but I'm glad that you're all here. We're going to wait another minute or two to get started. Um, but the lay of the land, we are going to have a short PowerPoint presentation. Um, and then we will have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So the way that we usually do questions um, is through the chat. So um, if you have a question ahead of time to drop it in there and then we start from the top and work our way through there um, at the end whenever we open it up for questions. But then also be aware that I have some awesome colleagues on the Zoom with me this evening um, that are gonna be replying back to some questions um, in the chat. So if you have a common question, there may be a reply at the bottom. So just look for your name because they're going to re be replying back to you. Um, so let's wait another minute and then we will get started. Okay, let's get started here. I am going to share my screen and um, we ask that you try to stay on mute um, for as much of this as possible and you don't have to show um, your video if needed. Um, so feel free to turn it off at any point. Um, I am going to be looking at my PowerPoint. So let's share my screen. There we go. Okay, can I get a thumbs up if you can see my screen, the PowerPoint? Thank you. Okay, prep for Pitt. Um, I'm assuming that everyone on the Zoom has gotten their assignment by now. Um, or is maybe patiently waiting for a housing assignment. But today we're gonna be discussing um, some common questions that come in um, during this time of the year, specifically regarding housing assignment, um, the pre-submission for your photo for your Panther ID, um, what to bring for camp or to campus, ship to pit, and then some common arrival questions. And then I will be going over resources available. And then, like I said before, we will do a Q&A. So before we get started on how to view your assignment, I do want to um, acknowledge that the MyPit mobile app is a really great resource for incoming students to have on their phone. Um, they can set up push notifications to be alerted for whenever we send out deadline reminders for housing applications and things like that. It's basically like my pit, but just an app form. So they're able to scroll through to see anything that they would be able to see on my pit and the Panther Central website, but on and through the app. And like I said, they can set up for notifications for specific deadlines. Um, so how to view your assignment. These are the instructions on the left going into my pit searching for housing and dining. Um, you wanna choose 21, 22 housing and dining information. And then you're gonna to navigate to this page here where 
right underneath housing and dining information, you will be able to click view your housing assignment. Um, on that page, you will see the assignment that you were given or selected if you're an upper class student. And then you'll also see your meal plan that you were um, that you chose on your housing application that was assigned to you. You do have until add drop of the fall term to change your meal plan. And if you want to change your meal plan, you just select the button right below view your housing assignment to update your meal plan. Um, so if you feel as if you come to campus and maybe the plan you selected is either too small or too large, um, you are able to update it all the way up until I believe September 5th. Um, so you do get some time to kind of feel out your meal plan before you have to act. <laughs> All right, next on the list, pre-submitting your photo. So whenever your student, or if you are a student, whenever you applied to live on campus, um, but you also had a deadline to pre-submit your photo for your Panther ID. Um, and if you haven't done that yet, you still have time. Um, Panther Central will be printing IDs all the way up until arrival, but we ask that you submit your photo at least by August 12th. Um, and then if you end up submitting any day after August 1st, there's a chance that it's not going to be mailed to your home address. Instead, you'll just pick it up at your guards booth when you come to move in. So um, if you haven't pre-submitted your photo yet, not a big deal. Just make sure that you um, pre-submit as soon as possible. But if you end up pre-submitting after August 1st, not to expect it at home, it will be at your guards booth when you arrive to keep. Okay, so you're coming to campus. What should you bring? Um, first of all, if you're not following us yet on any of our social media pages, Panther Central, um, you should definitely do that because I am getting a lot of this information from that page there. So you may have seen this graphic before, but this is a basic checklist of what you should bring to campus. But we do have a more in-depth checklist on the arrival um, website, which is just arrival.pit.edu. Um, and it tells you what to bring and what not to bring, and then what we provide for the room. So there's gonna be a bed, a dresser, um, some sort of closet or wardrobe for you, um, a chair, um, and then maybe a few other things, but you'll wanna check the website to make sure that you're able to bring certain things. Um, and I, we have gotten some questions about like um, holiday lights, like twinkle lights to hang in your room. Um, unfortunately, that is something that shouldn't be brought to campus, um, even if it is battery operated. Um, that is a fire hazard. So we ask not to bring the twinkle lights. And then if you do bring posters, um, the best way to hang posters is with command strips or the putty that you can find at Target or Home Depot. Um, anything that will not remove the paint from the walls beneath the poster. Okay, so you have all of your items that you wanna to bring to campus, but how are you gonna get your items there? Um, so last year was actually the first year that we used Ship to Pit and it was such a success that we brought it back for year two. Um, and information was emailed to the student's email address um, and it can be also found at the website on this PowerPoint, but um, the gist of it is get five free labels to use with UPS to ship boxes no larger than 20 by 20 by 20 um, to ship to campus and the boxes will be delivered to your room for when you arrive. So we wanna make your move in as easy as possible with little trips um, as possible going up and down to your room, to your vehicle. So that's why we utilize Ship to Pit and um, awesome feedback from last year. It is such a convenience. We have um, our staff on campus delivering the packages and it's just like awesome to see up to their room. All their stuff is already there and then they're like, wow, that was like a lot easier than we thought it was gonna be. Um, and then they're in and out of move-in and they're just enjoying the rest of their day, either walking around Oakland or just settling into their room. Okay, so arrival. Um, by this time, you should have already received your arrival date and time if you have a housing assignment. If you haven't figured that out yet, you wanna to go to this website here. Um, and we do say that if you need to reschedule your arrival date that you make it any one of the other days that 
arrival is scheduled for. So if you can't make your Saturday move in and Monday works better then maybe you come Monday instead. Um, you are only allowed to have one helper, um, but you are able to switch out that helper. So if you want, you know, one of your helpers to carry the heavy things up to your room and then your second helper to help organize your room, um, you know, that's how it worked best in the past. Um, but you still are only allowed to have one helper, but that helper isn't just for your designated time that you have to move in. So we generally say that when you arrive to campus, we um, you have your, your temporary parking spot for an hour. We ask that you unload everything and then you move your vehicle to long-term parking. And then your helpers can stay all day until 7 p.m. when arrival is over that day, um, but you're only allowed to have one helper in the building at a time. And then parking information is also provided on the arrival website um, for where you're going to be parking short term and long term. So you want to make sure you're finding your correct parking information to make it easiest for you and your family. Um, some resources available. We always have the housing services website if you have any specific housing questions. Um, Panther Central is a really great resource. They're open 24 seven. If you have a hard time getting in touch with them, um, via phone, we try recommend we recommend trying to call during an hour that isn't between like 10 and 5. So that's our really popular time to call. Maybe try a little bit later or really early in the morning. And then we do have upcoming Zoom sessions. Um, we have another one next week. I believe it's Tuesday evening um, at 6 o'clock to register for that. And then these Zooms will actually be posted to our website. So they'll be recorded and your friends that were not able to get in today um, or maybe missed the session will be able to watch these at a later time. Okay, so now I'm gonna open it up for Q&A. And let's see, we've got a lot of questions. Um, let's see what I can answer here for The group. Okay, so how do you rent a microwave refrigerator? So we call this a micro fridge. Um, you will be mailed an actual hard copy of the flyer on how to actually go on to rent the micro fridge. But I believe the website is mymicrofridge.com and you can just select University of Pittsburgh and it shows the unit that um, we approve to have delivered to your room and you pay them, they deliver it to your room for arrival and then it's there. Um, and then I think there are also options that like ensure the micro fridge and they do like a cleaning and everything like that. Um, so that's all on the student to decide what they want. But for the most part, micro fridge delivers the refrigerator microwave before you come and then takes it after you leave. So you don't have to worry about transporting it at all. Okay. So the question is, can one parent take the first trip up with the student and then stay behind in the room to clean set up while the other parent continues to do the unloading and running? As long as that the other parent isn't coming into the building, that's totally fine. So, you know, if the other parent wants to unload and run the stuff to the building and then the student brings it up to the room while the parent is in there organizing and things like that, totally fine as long as you don't have two helpers in the building at a given time. Um, it was really awesome when my mom made my bed for me for the first night in college. It was like, it was like I was at home. I was like, thanks mom, like my sheets are perfect. And then it never looked like that for the entire four years of college after that. So um, definitely let the, the parents stay in the room and get it settled while somebody else goes to the car and brings things back to the building. Um, So I don't know of a directory specifically for first year students to think about ride share for the holidays. Um, I do know that whenever you move in to definitely um, reach out to your RA so that they can maybe put the feeler out to the building and the other RAs in the building to see if there are other students in the building that might be from the same area as you. So they might be able to create like a core group. Um, 
and then maybe you can meet other students that way. But for the most part, I'm not aware of a directory for first year students to kind of see where other students are from. Definitely look into Facebook pages um, and meeting people, people on your floor and in your classes for that. Um, let's see here. Will there be dollies to assist with move-in or should we bring ours? No dollies are provided, but we do have housing carts. So they are pretty large. You can put a bunch of things in there, but if you feel as if it might be easier to carry containers or refrigerator, things like that with a dolly, highly recommend um, bringing a dolly as well. Um, all of the residence halls and apartments have blinds on their window, so there's no need to bring blinds, but we do have students that put up like a temporary um, curtain holder and decorate the room with their own curtains. So feel free to bring your own curtains, um, but there's no need to bring blinds. And as far as renter's insurance goes, it's not um, it's not mandatory to have renter's insurance, but we highly recommend it because there are accidents that occur that occur in the halls. And we do have times where students are responsible for those accidents and we don't want a large fee to come out of your pocket. So um, on our application, we um, have information about GradGuard. Um, they're a great company. Um, we don't really partner with them, but they are somebody that recommend that we would recommend. Um, and if you said yes, you're interested in receiving more information from them on your application, they have your information, they will reach out to you, you don't have to sign up for it, you can go through your own homeowners or, you know, go elsewhere, but we definitely recommend having some sort of renter's insurance for living on campus. Um, question is, how are the floor plans at residence in Bigelow? Um, each floor, except the first floor, is identical, so floors two through nine are the same, and rooms range on the floor between doubles and four-person suites. So um, students are either in a double or a four-person suite, and every floor is the same. Oh, Picklesburg. That's a great question. So Picklesburg, I actually think is happening during the same time as Arrival. Um, so it's a festival that happens downtown and it's all about pickles. And I've been there once and they have lots of pickle flavored food and ice cream and drinks. And I definitely recommend, especially if the weather is nice. Um, and the best part is it's a very easy bus ride to downtown from Oakland. You can hop on any of the 61s or 71s and it'll take you straight downtown. And then you can walk a couple blocks to the bridge and then you can hop on any of those buses to come back to Oakland or you don't have to transfer buses at all. Um, If you are having an issue updating your meal plan to put in a ticket with Panther Central, we can try to figure out why you may be having issues updating your meal plan, but um, you'll want to submit a ticket with them. And then I work directly with them to get the meal plans updated. Um, question about spring semester meal plan changes. So we offer the opportunity to change your meal plan for the fall semester and the spring semester. So right now you're changing your meal plan for the entire year. So it's gonna make you pick a two term change. But if you decide that the meal plan that you chose for the fall term isn't the best one for you and you wanna now change that for the spring term, um, you can do that. We open it up towards the end of November and it's opened all the way through ad drop of the spring term as well. So you're then open to, you're then able to change your meal plan for then as well. Okay. Upper class students do not have to pre-submit a new photo. If you already have your Panther ID, you are set. Um, 
Jeff, I believe you were on the call before. Are you still here? Yes. Question, where would a student park if they're moving into Ruskin Hall? Ruskin Hall, uh, short-term parking will be right next to the building. We will have all of the metered streets signed off. It will, they will have yellow parking signs that reserve for uh, move-in. Please make sure that your, uh, your uh, parking permit is on your dashboard. You have one hour to unload and then you can move to long-term parking. Thank you very much. Um, and at Amanda or Rachel, if you're on the call, at this time, Ship to Pit does not work internationally. Is that correct? That is correct. It is only for the 48 continental states. Thank you. Um, is there security at Residence Inn? Yes. So um, the Residence Inn Bigelow is just like any other regular residence hall on campus where there will be a welcome attendant at the front of the building, which will require students to swipe past to get up to the residence spaces. So. Um, the first floor as of right now will is kind of like a welcome floor where there's like communal spaces to sit, you can get out to the patio, things like that. And then um, there's gonna be a welcome attendant to get to the elevators to get up to the higher floors. You will have to swipe in, that's where you'll sign in a guest, everything like that. And um, two of my colleagues actually walked back from Bigelow to campus today and it only took them 15 minutes to get here. Um, so they were like, it's not that bad. Like it's, it was a really nice day. It was a really nice walk. And there's going to be an extra express shuttle that's going right from Bigelow to campus multiple times an hour. Um, and on the nights where students may be out later, I believe it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, um, the shuttle will be going until like around 4 a.m. Jeff, do you want to talk about, I forgot so you, you know about the shuttle. No, that's fine. And so we actually have multiple shuttles that service the residents in Bigelow. Um, my office is very close to that, the parking and transportation office. Um, it is, it's a, it's about a 15 minute walk to what I call the Cathedral of Learning, flat, very well lit, but it's serviced by the 10 A shuttles, which is every 10 minutes up until four o'clock in the morning. Uh, Monday, uh, Monday through Friday, we will have a dedicated express shuttle. We call it the RIB Express from 7A to 7P. And it'll take the students directly from the residence in either up to the Peterson Event Center or down to the, uh, the Cathedral of Learning. Thank you. Um, ship to Pit question. What are some things you recommend we have sent to Pit using Ship to Pit? Um, I know last year, a lot of students got their like bedding shipped, um, a lot of their, like even their, their clothing, they stuffed into boxes to have it shipped. Um, we do recommend to pack light. So you don't necessarily need your winter coat for the first couple of months in Pittsburgh. I, I will say that falls can be chilly, but you don't necessarily need a puffer um, in August and September um, to maybe hold off on shipping some of those items a little bit later. So not to bring like winter boots, Rain boots, maybe it does rain, um, but for the most part, bedding, pillows, um, maybe like your shower caddy, things that aren't really breakable um, to ship in those kinds of boxes. And then to bring your more personal items that you would find as like delicate or like don't ship any kind of personal item, like your um, any kind of medical information or your social security card, your passport, like you want to keep that stuff close by. Or your Panther card, please do not ship your Panther card. Yeah, you do need that to get into the building to get to your boxes. So don't ship your Panther card. Um, Rachel or Amanda, can you, will there be any kind of vendors on campus during arrival to sell any kind of goods for the room? 
the university stores will have both their retail locations will be open. They will also have tents out in the quad and they sell a variety of great items um, that you can use to decorate your rooms. Okay. Um, next question. How can you identify what floor you are on based on room number? Uh, Jen, yeah. I want to add, I want to add to the purchasing. Um, they are going to have late night target runs. Uh, they will be running buses, uh, student affairs will be running buses from University Place to Target. Um, let me pull up the exact date. I apologize. I wasn't ready for that one. Um, on Monday, the 23rd at 10 p.m., we will be running charter buses from University Place right next to Nuremberg Hall to Target until 1.30 in the morning. So if your students forgot something, they can grab it there and We'll give them round trip transportation. Jeff, what Target are they going to be going to? They'll be going to the Target in East Liberty. That um, is the best Target around, if I yeah. mm -hmm. say so myself. Um, great yeah. selection there. Full grocery section, too. So um, that'd be like a dream to be at Target at one in the morning. Um, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. OK. Next question, how can you identify what floor you are on based on your room number? Um, so if your room number is 404, that's the fourth floor, room four. And then if you are in a room that is um, a single or a double, you might have a dash one. So you're in technically in bed space one. But if you have a dash two or a dash three or a dash four, that kind of indicates the number of people you might have in your room. So you're going to be in floor four, room four, bed space three or four. Um, but ultimately, that first number is what floor you are on. Um, will we be able to access and use elevators to move in our stuff? In the residence halls. Absolutely. We have staff that actually man the elevators to make sure that they're, they're not getting too crowded and they're not going to the same floors all the time. And that's also why we do schedule move in the way that we do so that a lot of the people that are moving in are going to that same floor as you. So we're not regulating other floors while you might be moving into like the 12th floor of towers. We schedule everybody at that same time so that we're all going to the 12th floor that day to move in and we're not trying to get to all the other floors that day. Um, if you cannot arrive on your scheduled move-in day, we recommend arriving on another arrival day. So as long as you can arrive on one of those designated arrival days on the arrival website, you don't have to contact Panther Central to reschedule your move-in day, just arrive on one of those other days. You are able to purchase your own mini fridge um, we actually, I was talking to one of our maintenance guys today and he recommended nothing really larger than a 3.3 cubic feet refrigerator and as much of a one cubic foot for, uh, freezer on top. The dimensions of it fit in the room and it's no more than 115 volts. Um, so that is something that is allowed to be in the room. We do have people that buy much smaller ones. Um, and it's technically one refrigerator per double. So if you're in like a four person, six person, eight person suite in Sutherland, um, where you have doubles within that suite, you can have one fridge per double. Um, any information regarding COVID regulations or policies regarding mask requirements and things like that can be found at coronavirus.pit.edu. In any um, residence hall where there is a private bathroom within the suite. The students are responsible for cleaning their own bathroom. Um, and then any common bathroom will be cleaned by our housekeeping staff. Um, I'm gonna hold on the questions a little bit, but 
we have a representative here from Residents Life, Kayla Dunn. I was hoping that you could just touch a little bit on what first year students can expect moving into the residence halls as far as like meeting other students, their RA, what to expect that first week. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Kayla Dunn. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the assistant director for staff services in the Office of Residence Life. Um, I'm easily findable on the website. Um, if you just Google Pit Res Life, all of our faces are there. So if you can see me now and um, get my name, you can reach out to me there as well. Um, we are currently in the middle of our training, preparing for our student staff arrival. We will have approximately 180 um, student staff members, so resident assistants and community assistants, um, ready to welcome you and your students to our communities on campus. Um, we work in those spaces to engage our residents in a way that um, builds community and helps students learn outside of the classroom. Um, it's not just about right what they're going to study, although that's very important, um, but also about how they learn to be a member of a community and interact with others and what those experiences are like on their floor sections. Um, so for arrival, you'll see a lot of um, smiling eyes, I would say, because we will be masked, um, face coverings in the residence halls and all buildings, but some smiling eyes eyes for you um, and folks willing to just touch in base, see kind of what's going on, make sure that things are running smoothly. A lot of um, customer service type things from our residence life staff, really connecting with the housing team if there are any issues in the rooms or with the building, um, so on and so forth. So our, our staff sizes vary based on the building. Our larger buildings have larger student staffs. Um, so we have anywhere from 18 student staff members to eight student staff members um, in some of our residence halls. And then all of our residence halls actually also um, have a live-in professional staff member. This is a staff member with a master's degree in counseling um, or student affairs, higher ed administration, um, something along those lines there to supervise our resident assistants as well as be a resource and a support um, for your students um, as they're living with us on campus. So I'm happy. I've been zooming through the chat. I see a lot of logistical questions about moving, um, but of course, I'm happy to answer any questions about engagement in the residence halls. Um, I will name, I saw some um, questions um, around um, you know, shelter in place and some things like that, I would highly, highly, highly recommend um, that you are up to date um, with the COVID, the PIT COVID website, as well as I know um, some information has just gone out by, from the chancellor as well as um, our former um, dean of students, um, now vice provost, um, around what those policies are going to look like and what that means for students as they're arriving on the campus. And so um, th that information is out there. And I would say, of course, if there are any questions, um, but I, uh, the caveat, I am not a medical professional and I do not work in student health services. Um, and so we are navigating from our end what that looks like in relation to engagement, but all those decisions um, being made. Yes, love it. Thank you, Rachel, for dropping the coronavirus um, website in there. Um, so I would peruse that as, as well as make sure you're up to speed on the emails that had were sent, I think last week, um, last week or the week before. Um, and of course, just know that we're working within those parameters, right, to make sure that our students have an excellent experience and are able to engage with others um, safely within the residence hall. So how was that, Jenna? Did I do okay? It was. You did great. Thanks. Do you actually want to touch on one more thing? Um, sure. Maybe RSA. So I know that things can be a little overwhelming that first week, but that's really yeah. when we start trying to recruit people for RSA. Yeah, look at you, former advisor. Um, so when uh, Jenna's talking about RSA, that's our resident student association. All of our residence halls have a hall council. Um, I would say particularly for our first year students, but even upper class students. Um, but for our first years, it's a really great way to get involved in the community really early on um, and to kind of find a leadership capacity within a smaller um, setting, right? Like Pitt is a large space. That is a fact, right? You can see the numbers and you know how many students are coming to Pitt. Um, in residence life, we work really close. We work hard to make that number feel a lot smaller, right? So it might be a class of nearly 5,000, um, but it is a residence hall of maybe 700 or 300 in the floor section then of maybe 50 or 30. Um, and so um, the hall governance is very similar to maybe what your students um, may have experienced in high school with like a high school government um, organization. And so so 
just an opportunity for students to be representatives from their floors to speak to the needs of the community and also what the community would like to see. Um, and then we do have elections really early on in the fall term if folks want to step into a leadership role, whether that's president of their hall or vice president. Um, and our, our RAs serve as advisors as well as our professional staff member who um, I alluded to early, they, they uh, step in as advisors in that way. So it's also a really great way for um, students to get some leadership experience, but also to get some um, uh, just like some mentorship, right? Opportunity um, from our professional staff member. And Jenna served as an advisor for our off-campus apartments. Um, and so kudos uh, for that as well. But um, yeah, so that's, that's Hall Council RSA in a nutshell, a good way to get involved early on. Thank you, Kayla. Um, okay, so back to our chat. Somebody had asked if they could bring in a portable AC unit for the hall. Um, we do not allow you to bring in any kind of air conditioning unit. Um, and if you are living in Holland Hall where there is not any air conditioning, um, if you're not familiar with Pittsburgh, you really only need AC for like a few weeks of the year. And you're gonna be moving in like at the end of August and that is at the tail end of air conditioning season. So um, there are ceiling fans in every room, you'll be fine. Um, but if you absolutely need something, um, you can get approved for an air mover. It's not a cooler or anything. It's just an opportunity to move the air throughout the room. Um, we don't approve anything that would go in the window or um, have any kind of like condensation on it in the building. Um, someone asked if you can get your own lamps and extra furnished items. 1000% yes, we um, recommend you making your space your own space. Um, highly recommend maybe grabbing like a desk lamp or you know a few things right now, but it is a lot easier after you move in to kind of get the feel of the space to see what you might need or what you might want and then making it your space then. So um, don't feel as if you need to overbuy right now because you may end up taking some things home with you whenever you arrive. Um, okay, so I will touch on this here, and it's a question about the number of students within a room. Um, how did maybe a group of three end up together or before? So we took the recommendation based off of the COVID Medical Response Office, and they recommended that we could go back to full density within our spaces. So, um, you know, Holland Hall typically has singles, doubles, triples, quads. Um, we were not going at full capacity last year because that wasn't under the recommendation from the CMRO, but now we are able to do that. So our students can go back to enjoying triples and quads. Same thing with Nordenberg Hall. Last year it was all doubles. We were able to open the triples back to triples. Um, so we are excited to have those spaces back and to be at full density and capacity, um, but we would not put your student in harm if it wasn't under the recommendation from the COVID Medical Response Office. So if you feel as if you are unhappy with your assignment, I would at least try to give it a shot. Um, we are full right now. Um, so there is very little movement in being able to move students right now before arrival because um, I think this is like the first first year class ever where I have not seen many cancels at all. You know, some students deposit to a couple schools and then hold off to see some things and then cancel we have had like none. So I don't have any openings to just move students around. Um, and hi, I'm the person that actually makes all the changes. So I'm not sure if I quite want to make show my face or not. But um, if like I would at least try to feel it out, we do have a room change process that we start doing after ad drop because typically students, some students may not come to pit, but they don't notify us until that ad drop period. Um, so we might have some more wiggle room at that point. But you know, move in, get to know your roommates. You might love it. And if not, then put in a room change request um, at that point to kind of see what's available on campus at that time. Um, let's see. If you are international and you are not able to utilize ship to pit, 
Um, we don't have any kind of like luggage racks to use, but we do have those move-in carts that I was talking about that you can put your luggage in and get up to your room. Um, as far as early arrivals go, um, early arrival requests are only approved if you are a part of a large group that has submitted the request through Panther Central to be approved. So the Provost Academy is a really good example of that. Um, we do have a group of students that comes in prior to arrival as like a pre-orientation orientation, um, but your group organizer will submit your name and information to PC. That is how we approve you. And then that's how you get the approval to move in early. So if you are a part of a team or an organization or a group that is gonna be coming in for an early arrival, your group organizer will submit that to Panther Central. Um, to my understanding, all of the mattresses on campus are twin XL. Um, there is not a cabinet in your room to lock up items. So if you feel as if a safe is something that you want to bring to campus, um, I know they have like small ones that you might be able to fit under your bed or something where under a certain cir circumstance, you can just grab that and get out of a building under in the case of an emergency. But if you want to bring a safe, you can bring a small safe. Um, and there is also a gym at the residence inn, yes. Um, the mailing address to specific residence halls can be found on our website. Um, if you go to pc.pit.edu and you choose housing and you go into the actual building specifics under each building, it will have the building address. So you can actually get the address there. Your meal plan will start on August 19th. Um, so some of the dining options will begin, will open that day. So like um, market and the perch will start to open on the 19th. And then as arrival keeps going, more dining locations on campus will be open. Um, to clarify, how will Panther cards be given out? So if you have pre-submitted your photo up until this point, um, you will receive it in the mail. Um, if there's a chance that you have not pre-submitted your photo, you still have time, you should submit it all the way up until August 12th. If it's before August 1st, they will mail it to you. So you should receive it at your home address. If it's after August 1st, we will most likely be holding it on campus at the guard stage at the guards booth before you enter your building to pick up there when you arrive to campus. Um, we really try to alleviate the traffic coming into Panther Central during arrival because it can be pretty hectic. So the last thing that we want is you standing in line waiting to get your picture taken. You should at least try to pre-submit your photo so we can get your Panther card printed for you. There is an elevator in Forbes Pavilion, which is a first year building. There is not an elevator in Forbes Craig, which is apartments, which is upper class students. Each student will have their own desk in their room. If you are in a space that it has a semi-private or a private bath, I do not believe you need to bring a shower curtain. Those are already on the showers for you. Um, do singles in Holland have a bathroom? Some singles in Holland have private bathrooms. Um, there are a range of different kinds of singles in Holland Hall. There are smaller singles, regular singles, and then singles with a private bath. That's why there's a range on our rate sheet for Holland singles. So some of the Holland bathroom, some of the Holland singles have bathrooms, and those are the 17 rooms. Um, is cleaning required before moving things into the halls? Our housekeeping team is cleaning right now, prepping for arrival. So your room will be clean by the time you come. If you are the kind of person that likes to wipe down things whenever you come to disinfect and things like that, 
feel free to do that, but it is being cleaned, carpets are being cleaned, everything is clean before you get here. Um, so if you are a student that is moving in prior to August 19th for an early arrival reason, um, some of the groups have set up meals for you prior to move in. So if you're like an RA, Res Life takes care of your meals for you. Um, but if you're a student that's here that's not with a specific group for a specific reason why you need to move in early, um, Forbes Street Market is available for you. So there is a small grocery store on campus where you can pick up meals there. The first day of the term um, for housing and dining is August 19th. That's when you start to get access onto your card for your housing and your meal plan. And then the first day of the term can also mean the first day of classes. So if you're talking housing and dining, that begins August 19th. Kayla, can I ask you another question? Do you know anything about orientation for first years or as any of it in person this year? Yeah, you know? so yeah, so welcome week. I saw a question in the chat too around like, is there anything going on between move in and the first? Oh, is there ever? There's so much going on. Um, there are a lot of social programs that are happening to age students, and there's also mandatory programs that are happening that students, well, must attend because they're mandatory. Um, a lot of that is about safety um, and being on campus and um, expectations that we have for Pitt students and what that means. And thank you, Kathleen. I think that's KK um, dropping some some information in the, in the chat. So that orientation link is great. Um, there will be both in-person and virtual op options for Welcome Week. So for students who are sheltering in place, they'll still be able to engage. Um, and then students will have the option to attend orientation events in person as well. So and check out the link, um, lots of information there. Um, and a lot of it, again, social in nature, but we also do a lot um, with our residence life teens on that day. So they'll do their floor meetings with their um, floor mates and we'll also do building wide meetings on that day. Um, and then, like I said, some other mandatory programs for our students um, just to get them in the swing of being at Pitt and what it means to be a Pitt student um, and what our expectations for Pitt students are while they're with us. Thank you. Um, Jeff, if you could, there are some questions about specific parking location. So if you just want to like briefly go over, if I'm a student moving into Sutherland, where's my short term parking? Or if I'm on upper campus, where might my short term and long term parking be for unloading versus all day? Sure. It's, um, we'll have uh, for Nordenburg Hall. Uh, we'll have short-term parking right next to Nordenburg Hall. It's on the street. You'll have one hour to move in, and then you'll move to long-term parking at Soldiers and Sailors. Uh, for Towers A and B, you will be going to the Towers Garage, which is uh, underneath the building. Again, you'll have one hour of parking, and then we're going to ask you to move to your long-term parking area of Soldiers and Sailors. Tower C will actually be um, on the outside of the building next to five guys, landmark for everybody and so forth. That will be at the Bouquet Gardens parking lot and street parking. Um, once you're done parking there again, we'll move to long-term parking out to soldiers and sailors. Um, for, Forbes, um, for Forbes Hall, there's actually, it's an out, you can either park on the, uh, the street in front of the building on Forbes Avenue or go behind the building off of Euler Way. There's a short-term parking there. And then you would be able to uh, go to the long-term parking at the pause for a parking garage. Uh, upper campus uh, for Sutherland Hall. I see some Sutherland Hall people. Um, we actually have short-term parking in what we call the U lot, which is directly behind Sutherland Hall. Again, you'll be have one hour of parking in U lot, and then you'll be able to make your way up to the OC lot for long-term parking. Um, University Place, okay, what am I missing here? Residence in on Bigelow. Um, the residence in on Bigelow has a 
integrated parking garage. As soon as you pull into the, the facility, you actually be able to go and park your car in the parking garage, um, retrieve your carts. So at that point, you'll be able to move and you can actually stay at the residence in Bigelow, you know, for your move in time. If you do stay on campus, because you'll probably come back down, you know, if you want to explore the campus more, uh, leave the residency and you can park at the soldiers and sailors parking garage. And again, for any of the locations for the long term parking, make sure you have your parking pass and, um, you know, leave that on your dashboard. And as you're traveling around Oakland, um, I know some folks come in, they have U-Hauls, they have SUVs with the carrying cases on top of their vehicles. You'll see a lot of the streets around all of our residence hall will be reserved for move-in. Feel free to use those from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. during your move-in day. I think that's, I think I covered them all. <laughs> I think you covered all of campus in like two minutes, which is impressive. So, um, Thank you for that. Um, a couple more questions about shipping items to pit. So you can start shipping your ship to pit items today. Not a problem. We will have them in your room um, by the time you come to campus. However, if you're looking to ship items from like Target or Amazon or places like that, we ask that you not do that right now because that will completely back up our mail room. But if you decide to order things closer to your move in day, so if you're scheduled to come in on the 20th and you place an order on the 18th with two day shipping, so you're already a resident of that hall, the mail room will get the package and then you can come in that day when it's delivered to actually pick it up. We ask that you don't ship things sooner than your move in time just because the mail room will get extremely backed up and they want to make sure that you're actually going to be a resident of that room and everything like that before they start accepting those items. So um, try to hold off on Amazon packages and things like that and utilize that two day shipping if you have Prime. And if you don't have Prime, feel free to sign up for a Prime student. You get it at a discount. Um, we'll answer, answer a couple more questions um, before we end at seven. Um, Rachel or Amanda, do you want me to touch on anything that I haven't spoken of yet that you can think of before I answer some more questions? I just, oh, oh, go ahead. I'll start and just say that arrival.pit.edu will answer a lot of the questions that I'm seeing in the chat. It's a great resource. Um, you can get your parking pass for your temporary parking. It's right there on the homepage. Click the link, click the PDF, you print it out. I've seen a couple questions about that. Um, you can find your move-in date and time. You can find the move-in checklist. Um, you can find information on ship to pit. Um, it's just a really great resource. So please, if you haven't checked it out, please do. I was just going to add, if you are not a first-year student or the parent of a first-year student and you are an incoming upper-class student, so a sophomore, junior, or a senior, and you are looking to move in early and gain valuable leadership experience. We are looking for volunteers to help with student move-in, which is pit arrival. And you can apply for those positions by visiting the arrival website as well. Thank you, Amanda and Rachel. Um, So um, I'm gonna go over shower curtains again. Um, if you live in Brackenridge Hall, Bruce Hall, Sutherland, um, Ruskin Hall, Bouquet Garden, Center Plaza, um, which those three are upper class buildings, but if you live in a suite or an apartment style with private or semi-private baths, shower curtains will be provided and you have to clean your own showers and bathrooms. Um, your meal plan will begin on August 19th. That's when you can start swiping in and out of the dining halls. And we had a couple of questions about like if helpers are staying for the whole weekend in Pittsburgh, like are they gonna be able to go back into the building the following day? Um, generally, we say yes. Um, you will need to stop by the guards booth again to get a wristband and it's still only one person in the building with the student at that time. So um, 
you'll just have to re-register your helper that second day to get a wristband. Um, Jenna? Yep. I want to circle back. I, I seen some questions when I was talking about parking, uh, the buildings in what we call the quad, which um, Brackenridge, Holland, uh, help me out, I'm drawing blank. McCormick, Bruce, Thank Brack. Thank you. All of those parking, all of those building locations, the short term and the long term parking will be at the soldiers and sailors garage. So for you lucky folks in those quad buildings, you'll be able to park your vehicle, unload it, you will not have to move to long-term parking. Um, the other question I saw that popped up about arrival volunteers, um, uh, so if they're, that the uh, moving dates will be coming for those. If you know any upperclassmen and sharing that arrival volunteer information, right now we are accepting volunteers up until July 30th. And at that point in time, we'll get back to those volunteers, letting them know their moving dates and times. Thank you. Um, and just to give you some perspective, if you are an incoming first year student, we really try to make it as easy as possible for you during move in. So where your short term parking is, you're most likely going to be like right next to the welcome station where you get your um, your arrival gift, you're going to get your housing cart right there, you're going to cart your housing cart back to your vehicle, you're going to go up to your room, you're going to unload it, come back down. You're not going to be walking very far to the um, welcome station to your short-term parking spot to unload, um, but you may have to walk a couple blocks from Soldiers and Sailors back to Tower A. I think it's like a, a block and a half maybe um, to get to that space and even to Ruskin Hall. I think it's like three or four blocks from long-term parking down to Ruskin, but um, you're not going to have to go very far to actually unload your vehicle to the welcome station. It's all right there. Um, so if we did not end up getting to one of your questions, I apologize. There are a lot of questions coming in, um, but feel free to contact Panther Central and submit a ticket. They forward housing specific questions to my team. We are able to answer those for you. Um, and like I said before, if you try calling during a very busy time, which is usually 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. to maybe try a different hour later in the evening, early in the morning to actually get a representative on the phone right off the bat, um, we have had higher call volume recently. Um, but yes, and also the chat is also available. Um, but for now, I think we are going to call it an evening. Um, I want to thank all of my colleagues that were here this evening. Um, feel free to register for next week's as well if you are ready to, to gain all the knowledge that you did this evening. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in August. If you see one of us on campus with our mask on, please say hi. But otherwise, I hope you have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. When will it, this video be available? Um, we're going to try to make it available by tomorrow, but at the very latest, it'll be available by Friday. So you have to just okay. pull it off Thank of you. Zoom and get it on the site. No problem. Okay.